as a pediatrician, my concern is regarding the safety and well-being of children worldwide um, and seeing the bodies of disfigured children um, and the ongoing uh, destruction of hospitals um, are one against the Geneva Convention uh, but two, it's deeply um, influenced uh, our emotional well-being. Um, so I suppose the reason why we're here today is we want to let the Palestinian people know that we see them, we hear them, and we stand with them. I am deeply grateful and respectful of the people of South Africa. Um, they are one of the only two nations, I believe, that had the um, strength and the determination to fight against injustices. Um, so they have my deep founded respect. I'm here proudly from Cape Town, South Africa, with my sisters, two of them from Paris, my other sister from Cape Town. And we're taking a stand today against the injustice that's happening in Palestine and in Gaza, against the inhumanity, against the evil that's taking place. And Proudly, as South Africans, we support the ICJ, we support the case that's been put forward, and we're hoping to see peace and justice take place. So we're standing here um, with humanity, with our brothers and sisters, and we're hoping to see peace and justice. I'm Irish. We share a history of oppression and struggle, so I think it's right to show solidarity. And I've turned up today to be a voice for the voiceless and to end the murder of children. Um, and to stop the genocide. We're meant to live in a just democratic society and as you can see by the million odd people that are here, our country don't agree with this, our people don't agree with this. So why are our government and our politicians spending our money on bombing these people, on supporting an apartheid situation against these people and killing innocent civilians in the name of defending Israel, which has nothing to do with us? I'm just human, I'm a parent, I have a seven-year-old who, when there's a motorbike passing by, he touches his ears. Now imagine those children being subject to bombing every single day for months. I can only put my son's face on those kids and say, look, this, whatever the issue, it needs to stop. That's why I'm here. You know, it's, it's quite a haul to get down here and get all this together for the day, but um, it's worth it. It's important, especially since we've got um, the, court, the, the uh, case that the South Africans brought at the ICJ, and hopefully there'll be some movement on this. It will make a difference. I've travelled um, down from Birmingham today. Um, we are just absolutely appalled at what is going on. Uh, we just cannot believe how our government is completely complicit, completely embarrassed to be a British, British citizen as it stands. Um, UK, US, Israel, shame on you. Um, we are asking for a ceasefire now, but beyond that, we need this occupation to end and we need Palestinians to be liberated once and for all. I, well, I'm here, like everybody else is here, to support something that I know absolutely 100%, absolutely 100% is the right thing to do. I'm here with my local group from Pillington, London Borough Pillington, from Uxbridge, and we all feel the same. We just have this energy that we just have to come here and do something. And, I, and being here, I just know, I know that I'm with like-minded people. I mean, we are the majority, aren't we? We definitely are, so I'm so happy to be here. I've come from Manchester. This is my fourth protest that I'm attending. I usually come alone as well. So this is the first time, second time I've come with cousins. That's how passionate I am about it. I attend every protest every weekend, some in Manchester, some here, you know, because I just want it to end. It is a genocide. They're killing innocent civilians, you know, and um, as you can see how I'm dressed, fully Palestinian from my necklace to my arms. To... I go to work like this. I've been kicked out of work because of my uh, support for Palestine. Sorry, officer. Um, no, it wasn't me. I didn't make the banner. It was someone else.
the watermelon is the very intelligent symbol that is used to uh, when they are they can't use their own flag this is a representation of the flag because it has the same colors as the Palestinian flag so this has been used when they are oppressed and they can't raise their own flag so they hold the batikha the watermelon and this is why I'm flying the kite today for Palestine and for Gaza thank you week South Africa has been laying out its charge of genocide against Israel at the International Court of Justice. South Africa has presented a formidable case and it has presented a formidable challenge to the world. Which side are you on? Are you for international law or for the law of the jungle? Are you serious about all people being equal? The answer, the answer will impact generations to come. It will resound all around the world. South Africa's case is also directed at those complicit, complicit with Israel's brutality the U.S. and the U.K. included. The same countries, the same countries who stood the longest by South Africa's apartheid regime are the very same countries who stand by Israel today. This week, South Africa has shown others what it means to lead. And now others must measure up the case for an immediate, permanent ceasefire is now unanswerable. The refusal to support an immediate permanent ceasefire is unconscionable. So we now reiterate that call. All of us, the many, demand that world leaders act now. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. Now the only problem with the proceedings in The Hague is that the British and American governments should have been there in the dock alongside Israel. People say that the British government is allowing a genocide. No, that is too passive. The British government is arming the genocide, is politically supporting the genocide, is diplomatically backing the genocide, and the Sunak and Starmer are up to their waist in Palestinian blood. And on the subject of diplomacy, how much longer do we have to have in London the racist Israeli ambassador who, sit, who calls for, from the river to the sea Palestine to be Israel? Zippy Hotovaili should be run out of town. From the start we have said this could lead to a wider war and that is what is happening today. There could be peace in the Red Sea tomorrow if Israel stopped its attack on Gaza. That is the root of the problem. But we are bombing Yemen to make it easier for Israel to bomb Gaza. We are not fighting for freedom of navigation. We are enabling genocide and the Royal Navy needs to get out of the Red Sea and get back to Portsmouth. Now, now politicians want to stop our movement. The latest idea from someone they keep in that Museum of the Living Dead called the House of Lords is that we should have to pay the police for the privilege of protesting for Palestine. Let me make it clear, we will never do that.
it, nothing is going to stop us marching because, brothers and sisters, those of us that do not have to pull our children from the rubble of their homes, those of us that do not have to watch our children eating grass because there is no food, those of us that do not have to hear our children screaming as they suffer amputations without anaesthetic. We do not have the right to stop, and that is why we will march for a ceasefire now. Freedom for Palestine and imperialism out of the Middle East. As long as there has existed Zionism, there have been anti-Zionist Jews. We have always been here, and we will continue to be here. We belong here alongside our Muslim siblings and alongside all those who stand up for justice against the occupation. I am here grieving the murder of 30,000 Palestinians in cold blood. In 2019, I worked in Gaza City as a coding instructor. I am here fighting for the dreams of my students who are running for their lives from Israeli brutality. This is not a hate march. We are being lied to, and our fear has been weaponized. Standing here today, I feel courage. I feel the hope that we generate every time that we march. And I believe that we will win. I have to be honest, there have been points over the last three months where I've wondered whether I will see a free Palestine in my lifetime. And in those moments, I try to remember my ancestors. I try to remember my ancestors, kidnapped from the shores of Africa, who survived the transatlantic slave trade. I try to remember my great-grandmother Lenny, who survived Nazi Germany, where both her parents and six of her siblings were murdered. I remember them because without their resilience and without their resistance, I would not be standing here today. I remember my ancestors and I honor them here today, joining this movement as a proud anti-Zionist black Jew. I want to say about the Jewish communal leaders, who stand four square with Israel. The chief rabbi who said a few days ago that he supported our heroic soldiers, our soldiers, the Israelis fighting in Gaza. They are not my soldiers. <laughs> Communal institutions who claim that all Jews support Israel are playing a dangerous game. They are aligning Jews with Zionism. They are making every one of us responsible for Israel's crimes. We are not, and we oppose them and Israel vigorously in its genocidal actions in Gaza. Our next speaker is a very, very special man. He's an author, he's a poet, and today he's speaking in memory of his friend and ours, Benjamin Zephaniah, who very sadly passed away at the end of last year. Benjamin was a lifelong friend of the Palestinian people and he was a patron of the Palestine Solidarity Campaign. So please give a really, really warm welcome to Lem Sassay. Today, I'll be reading an extract from Benjamin Zephaniah's book, Rasta Time in Palestine, published in 1995 after Benjamin traveled to Gaza. The first page of the text features a picture of Benjamin and Nelson Mandela standing arm in arm. It begins, I went to Palestine, Israel, with an open mind. Now I cannot deny it. I support the struggle of the Palestinian people. I can't help it after seeing what these people have to live with and my own personal experiences. I left convinced that I should do everything I can do to help their cause. And the only thing I can do is write. I could have 
gone on for a hundred page epic on the subject, but I used this format, Rasta Time in Palestine, to inspire the reader to look further, as there are a great number of writers who can cover the subject a lot better than myself. That said, I must say the people are the most important. Lately, we have heard a lot of talk about glasnost and perestroika troops out and peace talks. This has happened not because politicians have invented it, it has happened because people will not tolerate invasion and occupation, war and starvation for an unlimited time. The Palestinians are just people, people crying and dying for peace talks. I wanted I wanted to appeal to the black community because we have suffered and are still suffering from the acts of imperialistic states. Everyone needs to be more aware and this is an appeal to anyone who can write a letter to the Israeli embassy, anyone who can sign a petition, anyone who can walk a few miles on a demonstration, just anyone who is ready to stand up and be counted. Since my visit, I have also been to Tunis, where I met many of the children whose parents were killed in the bombings of Lebanon in 1982. This was a very moving experience that made a big man, me, cry. Here were children who had lived through hell but they had just wanted to play football and collect records like all other children. I don't think I'm being too idealistic in saying that I would like to see a world without refugees. The world is large enough for all of us and it hurts to see people who were refugees creating refugees, hopefully before these words are published. Oh, hopefully, before these words are published, the South African government will be, will be talking to the ANC. Many would have said this. Many would have said this. Many would have said this was impossible a few years ago. We now see confusion in Israel, in Israeli political circles, as certain factions seek some dialogue with the representatives of the Palestinian people. The Israelis who seek dialogue may not be doing so because of their love for the occupied, but more for the benefit of their own people. It is a sad state of affairs and not good for their democracy. If people who live in Israel and are against the occupation are too frightened to speak out, as I, Benjamin Zephaniah, write these words, Mrs. Thatcher is touring Africa and telling Israel to talk. Even the Americans are getting involved and warning Israel that it will reduce its financial aid to them. I see America as occupiers who have put their natives at the bottom of their pile. And I wish Mrs. Thatcher would tell her government to talk about Northern Ireland but well, that's another book or two. Israel has the chance to give peace a chance and it should go for it. The Holy Land is a beautiful place and Christians should remember that Jesus was a Palestinian. The world should not let this land be the subject of war any longer. And this is the time of Glasnost and peace talks Let's get some on Palestine. There are many UN declarations that I could quote, but at the end of the day, we shall have to refer to our hearts and not documents. So let's change the world. Oppressed people of the world, unite. Benjamin Zephaniah. We need people in the Labour Party and outside to stand up for Palestine. Because let's be clear, this issue isn't gonna go away. It's gonna haunt Keir Starmer before, during, and after the next election. And we need to make sure that Palestine is on the ballot paper, that everyone is challenged.
Do you support ceasefire? Do you support Palestine? Do you oppose the genocide? And if you don't, we're not voting for you. That needs to be the message. The right thing for me was to step away from Labour because what they're doing doesn't sit right with my soul. Now, as an independent councillor, and there are many of us, we stand as advocates for change. I can't hear you. We stand for advocates for change. We are the voices now that truly represent you. Don't take it for granted. Your vote means something. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Your vote means something. You guys, family, friends, if they've not registered to vote, get them registered, get your neighbours registered, because your vote means change. <laughs> Democracy, it starts with you, it starts with me, it starts with us. Today, make a change. Your vote matters. I am telling you, as an independent councillor, if somebody knocks on your door, you ask them what they stand for. If what they stand for does not align with what you stand for, don't put them back in the seat of power. Look at Parliament over there. Look, look at the building. Do they represent you? Let your independence speak up for you because we are here to make the change in your lives today. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone for being here today. Thank you everyone for turning out on this global day of action in support of the Palestinian people. There are demonstrations in every major city going on today. And next weekend, there'll be local demonstrations all over the country. I'll be in Birmingham myself, but they'll be all over the country. Thousands and thousands of people have been killed because they're Palestinians by the Israeli occupying forces and ever since this disgraceful and enormous bombardment of Gaza began in October. But there are many who suffered long before that as well. And if I may, I'd just like to recall the name of a brilliant young man who went to Gaza to support the Israeli Committee Against House Demolitions and try to save children from dying in that process. And for his pains, he was shot dead while carrying children to a place of safety. He died exactly 20 years ago today. His name was Tom Herndl. Come. People like Tom, and so many others should never be forgotten in this awful carnage that we're witnessing at the present time. The carnage that is destroying life and its very self in Gaza. And as you know this week, South Africa, who suffered so grievously under apartheid, have repaid the world for their solidarity against apartheid by showing their solidarity with the people of Palestine. And South Africa taking the case and application to the International Court of Justice in The Hague was to me a very poignant moment. I was there in the court listening with pride to the way in which South Africa and all of its representatives presented the most brilliant, logical, legal, compelling case to say that the attack on the collective population of Gaza, the expulsion of the people of Gaza from their homes, the destruction of their homes, their schools, their hospitals, and everything else amounts to the crime of genocide under the International Convention. It's now up to the judges, the International Court of Justice,
judges to decide on that case. I simply say this, any, anyone who heard that case, who heard that submission, must be convinced that not only is the case just, there has to be a ceasefire now, and that must be demanded by the ICJ. I would also say this, the attacks on Gaza, 70% of the homes destroyed, the schools, the hospitals, and now more people dying from wholly preventable conditions because of starvation, of dehydration, and of diarrhea, and all these preventable conditions brought about by the destruction of normal life. A million people corralled into a small area around Rafa trying to survive. The ceasefire must happen. Justice must prevail. But it's not brought about by bombardment of Yemen, extending the war into Lebanon, the Red Sea, or anywhere else. As if there aren't enough bombs that have already been dropped on the Yemen over the past years by Saudi Arabia, supplied by Britain and the United States. So our demands, our international, our global demands, our justice for the Palestinian people. But our demands are to live in a world of peace, not dominated by the interests of armed suppliers and military thinkers. Instead, put the people first, human rights first, justice first, education first, sustainability first. We are a movement of millions. We're a movement of millions all around the world. Today, in solidarity with the people of Palestine and every day in solidarity with the people of Palestine and in solidarity to bring about that world of peace which we will see in our lifetime. Thank you. Just uh, to, to, to join us is Roz Brown, who was uh, there singing at the end. How are you doing, Roz? Okay, thanks. Uh, and um, uh, did you did you enjoy the process? Did you think it was a, a good one? Have you been there before to sing? I haven't seen you before, but it, no, it was been, fantastic to see you. I think we missed we missed just one of the big demos, and and also many of us have been on the um, the day of action, local days of action things as well. Um, I've been to at least two outside Starmer's office, for instance, in Camden. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we missed one of the big demos because one of our members has just died and he was he had a terminal um, diagnosis. So we went on a visit to him one of those Saturdays, but, but otherwise we've been on every single one. And I had no idea. There's a kind of network of, of choirs that do the same thing. 
Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, that's right. So you last week you had, I don't pronounce this correctly, you had Tad Hammond singing um, at the boycott song, um, actually doing an action in the shop, which was great, Waitrose it was, wasn't it? Yes. So we, we know at least some of them. I mean, we know, you know, and every year there's a street choirs festival. So it started as quite a political festival and now there's still a lot of political choirs that go to it and some community choirs as well, but everybody's got at least some politics in common, you know, at these festivals. So we, we meet up every year. It's hosted a different different place every year, um, according to what choirs are willing to do it. You know, it's a lot of work. Um, yeah, so we've we've known the Sheffield choirs for... Well, I think we should. We'll have to have a choir of the year competition on on the on the on the show. Get uh, get Conway Hall and have all the choirs there, and then um, uh, see what happens. Um, I'm just going to. Um, I, I've just seen Jeremy's on the on the Zoom. I'm just going to. Um, as Jer Jeremy was there too, as as we see. Uh, how you doing, Jeremy? Can you hear me? All right. Fine. Vines, thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me on, Crispin. I hope you're well, and uh, well done to everyone that uh, marched yesterday. But yesterday was just one of many staging posts in this uh, whole um, campaign. We're going to need everybody out at local demonstrations next week, and then the um, next big national one is going to be the first Saturday in February. Um. I'm I'm keen to hear that because you were in the Hague and and I believe you you queued up a bit. Uh, well, Craig Murray was queuing up too, and um, there were only a few of you in there. Um, what what was your experience of of the Hague? Well, it was um, wonderful to be there, and we had to be at the court before six in the morning in order to get in, and I went in with um, Jean Luc Mélenchon and Craig and some other people. There were very few places available uh, in fact there were only 14 places available to witness what was going on in the court the proceedings were three three and a half hours of presentation by south africa no interventions by judges just a straight presentation from south africa and then the following day the same amount of time was allotted to israel the south african presentation was very well put, legal and um, passionate without being um, over demonstrative because they wanted to make the case that the Convention on Genocide had been breached by Israel because of uh, its collective punishment of the people of Gaza, but also because of the statements made by um, successive leading politicians including the president and the prime minister in israel as well as various army officers that had said in terms that um, there are no neutrals in gaza everyone is an enemy and that the entire population has to be reduced by 90 percent and um, gaza will become a depopulated as far as palestinians are concerned and they will be basically pushed into egypt and the in the negev the whole point behind the argument being put was that this is collective punishment which is illegal and um they were specific on the precedents for genocide the other ones that have been um found by the international court of justice and uh they were just utterly brilliant in their mm. passion what came to me was that this was there was something wonderfully synergetic about it many of us of my age have spent decades campaigning against apartheid to try and end the apartheid regime in south africa and uh sometimes it seemed like um, a long haul much longer haul for the people in south africa but eventually apartheid was overthrown and mandela became president and the rainbow nation was born and south africa taking the very brave step of initiating proceedings under the genocide convention with the support of the arab league um brazil colombia and bolivia and i think other countries are now joining in as well was a big step 
a huge step. And I think we should just say a big thank you to South Africa for that, because they are going to get an awful lot of attacks because of this. And thank yeah. you to that fantastic legal team that they put together. But the end of the occupation isn't just going to come from this. If the court makes an interim judgment, which is what South Africa requested, uh, an interim judgment on the on the burden of the argument, which would be essentially to stop the bombardment, then that will be an enormous step forward. But what a crying shame that Britain and the United States are still effectively supporting Israel's objectives in Gaza. And whilst they are saying they're doing their best to get aid and support in, fine. It'd be a lot easier to get it in if it wasn't being bombed on the way in. And so we have to keep up those political demands. And I'll be making those again tomorrow in Parliament because there's going to be a statement from the Prime Minister about the bombing of Yemen. Now, I'll just finish on this because I know you've got a lot of other guests to deal with, um, Crispin. Just to say this, when we had the first demonstrations in um, uh, last autumn after the events of um, October the 7th, many of us said, look, this is the most dangerous possible thing that's going on. This war is going to spread. It's going to spread into the Mediterranean. It's going to spread into Lebanon. And it's now already spreading into the Red Sea with the deployment of naval forces in the, in the Red Sea. We've now started bombing Yemen. This isn't going to end tomorrow. It'll get worse and worse unless we can raise enough voices around the world to mm -hmm. prevent this happening. What we're seeing is governments all over the world pouring arms in, pouring um, political support to Israel and not saying or doing anything about trying to bring about a peace process and a resolution to this uh, whole issue. Fundamentally, peace can only come in the whole region with justice for the Palestinian people. That is the message we've got to give. And I just say thank you to everyone that came out yesterday, but also thank you to some very brave people in Israel that signed the su a supportive statement for the application to the International Court of Justice. And their names have been published, they're very prominent people. And also those in Israel that have tried to mount demonstrations against the continued occupation. And the brilliant speech in Trafalgar Square on the second stage, which you heard yesterday from Barnaby Rain, who quoted at length from the Torah, pointing out that in his view, what was going on was morally wrong in every conceivable way. Our march yesterday was a unity of all peoples, of all communities, of all faiths to show our demand for peace. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Jeremy. It makes more sense now to me. I mean, it just, there's so much going on at the moment, but you've simplified uh, actually what's, what's happening. Um, and uh, we've just got to keep going out there and making as much noise and protesting as we have been and get more people out. Thank you for coming on. We've also, by the way, we've got, a, you, uh, we've got an interview of someone in Tel Aviv coming up um, and how they're protesting. So we are going to hear that. Um, thank you, Jeremy. Um, now I'm going to, um, there's one other person I wanted to invite on to, to speak who was at the, um, protest yesterday and I've only included a very short part of what she said because I'm not saying she, she talked too much or anything but she said a lot and um uh Mimi uh good to, good to speak to you yesterday um what what do you, what was your impression of the of the protest did you have did you think it was a, a powerful one and and, and where, where do you see things going from here thanks for having me on Chris Finn um yeah I, I see the protests every week as my therapy. I find them very cathartic. I think <laughs> during the week, I, I sit there looking at my screen, watching this genocide play out. I sit there um, seeing what news comes through from social media, where we have our politicians that are in power in this country, uh, <laughs> egging on genocide, egging on apartheid and profiting from it. We've got conflicts of interest going on where our prime minister has a family company where they directly profit from the links of his family with um, Israeli uh, bombs and um, yeah it, we've got massive conflicts of interest going on um, 
And when I see this midweek, I get bloody depressed. I'm sure a lot of people on here do. So when it comes to Saturdays and I've got the chance to um, take to the streets and just show up and be amongst like uh, hundreds of thousands of other people that feel the same way that I feel, that see things the same way that I see them, that want change from all different backgrounds. Um, but that doesn't matter. We, we're all human and we want peace. Um, so when I when I go to these demonstrations, I find it very cathartic. I find that it's like a type of therapy to me, if you, if you see what I mean. Um, yeah. It's good to be with everybody. And I, I think I'd go mad without that every week.